Thus, I purified them from everything foreign and appointed duties for the priests and the Levites, each in his task. And I arranged for the supply of wood at appointed times and for the first fruits. What, again? No, no, bring in the, bring in the, the, the offerings for the Levites again and tell Elisha I need to talk to him again. All right? Hi. Yeah, go ahead and bring the, the, the wood and the first fruits and go ahead and sit over here. Um, we're just trying to stock up for things for the Levites. Um, they've got a lot of work to do teaching the people. But actually, you look pretty tired. Go ahead and set it down. Have a seat. I mean, we're all pretty tired. Been working pretty hard on rebuilding this city of Jerusalem and the wall around it. But, what? Oh, you, you actually haven't been here that long. Well, awesome. Go ahead and have a seat. Yes, bring some water and some food for my friends. Yeah, get comfortable. So, as you know, my name is Nehemiah. I'm the son of Hanani. I'm the king of Persia's cupbearer. Well, yeah, we're a long way from the capital of Persia. How did I get here? Well, I'll tell you how I got here. It actually started, gosh, it was more than 12 years ago at this point. It's a long time. But I was working in the king's palace and the, uh, my brother Han and I came and some of the, the men of Judah and I, I went up to them and I asked them, how, how are the people in Judah? And they told me and they said, that this, the wall of Jerusalem was broken down and the gates were burned with fire and the, the people were afflicted. And that, that hurt me and I was, I was so sad. I cried for days hearing that news. So I was being so sad, I, I, I was trying to do my work and I, I was serving the king and the king of, of Persia saw how sad I was. And I don't know if you know this, but you're, it's very dangerous to be sad in front of the king. Um, the king doesn't like to be surrounded by sad people. He, you could actually be killed for that. And yet God was with me and, and the king reached out and he said, he said, Nehemiah, why are you so sad? And I said that I was heartbroken that the, my city, my people in Jerusalem and the people of Judah were, were oppressed and the, and the gates were burned with fire. And he, he looked at me and he said, well, what do you want to do about that? And I looked and I saw Queen Esther sitting next to the king and I, I remembered what God can do if we have faith. And I, I said a little prayer to God and I, I was emboldened and I turned to the king and I said, what I need are letters from you to the governors of the land and to those who keep the forest so that I can have supplies and trees and, and, and men that I may go and rebuild the city and take away the reproach from my people. And you know what the king said? He said, yes, God was with me. And so uh, we took the letters, I took officers of the army and some other men, and we went, we gathered supplies, and we presented them to the, the people, the governors of the land of Judah, and we began to rebuild the city. So actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we brought the letters to the officials in the land so the governors knew what we were going to do. And there were two governors who found out about this. Their names were Tobiah and Sembalat. These were two people who do not like the children of Israel. And when they heard that I came here to help the children of Israel, they had it in their minds that this was not gonna happen. You'll hear more about these guys later. So, before I could go out and do the work with the people, we spent three days inspecting the damage and I'm not just talking about going out and looking at stuff in the broad of daylight. No, I knew that there were people who wanted to, to cause this work to not happen. So what we had to do is we had to sneak out by night, myself and only a very small group of men who I could trust. I didn't take any animals with me except for just the one that I was riding on. And we spent three whole nights going around the city, looking at all the damage, trying to figure out in my mind how we were gonna fix this together. And it wasn't until that work was done that I then came to the leaders of the Jewish people and I said, this is what we need to do. We are here to take away the reproach from our people from among the nations. So this is how we're gonna rebuild. And so we got the people together and we started standing shoulder to shoulder and building the wall section by section, brick by brick. And Tobiah and Sambalat, they still 
kept trying to interfere with the work and they mocked us and they said that the wall would fall flat and there's no way that we could build together. But still we stood shoulder to shoulder, building this wall section by section, trying to, to rebuild the separation between the children of Israel and those outside the wall. And so we were building the wall all together. Everyone was working together and things were going great. But remember, Tobiah and Sambalat, those guys were bullies. They hated what we were doing. And so they started to make fun of us. And I don't know about you, but when someone comes and makes fun of you constantly, day in and day out, that's discouraging. And the people were hearing this all the time. What was it, what was it that Sambalat had said? Oh, that's right, he was talking to his friends and he was saying, what are these feeble Jews doing? Are they going to restore Jerusalem for themselves? Can they offer sacrifices? Can they finish it in a day? They said, can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble or even the burned ones? And then his buddy Tobiah, he jumps in and he says, he says, if even a fox jumps up on their wall, it's just gonna knock it over. I don't know about you, but a fox is only like this big. So he's trying to say our wall was, was worthless and meaningless. I don't know about you, but when you've worked really hard on something, that's discouraging. And yet, I knew that we needed to get this work done. And so what did I do? I turned to God and I prayed and I said, these, these, these bullies, Tobiah and Sanballat, and all these people, they're, they're discouraging your people who are building this wall. And so God answered our prayer and he gave us a heart of courage and we were united again and we worked as people with one mind and we, we built the wall and we got it up halfway to its total height. And that's a lot of work. And that was amazing. But when Tobiah and Sembalat and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites and the Arabs and everyone outside the wall who didn't want this to happen, when they heard about it, they got even more upset. And at this point, rather than just using words to harm us, they started making plans about how they were actually going to attack us. And at that point, I knew that it was time to introduce a new plan of action for our people. And so when I heard that Tobiah and Sambalat and all the enemies around us were seeking now not to just insult us, but to kill us, I set up a guard day and night to be watching for them. But that wasn't enough, because the children of, of Judah came and told me, and they said that the strength of the burden bearers is failing. And they said that, that they were unable at this point to complete the work. Men's hearts were failing them for fear. The work stopped. And then when I saw their fear, I gathered the officials, the nobles, and all the people together. And I said, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And fight for your brothers, for your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And you know what they did? Through the grace of God, everyone picked up their tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. And we joined again, shoulder to shoulder, with one mind and one heart, to rebuild the wall. Our enemies didn't mess with us after that. And I can tell you that by the grace of God, we finished the wall from start to finish in 52 days. Imagine that, 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, and the nations surrounding us saw that the wall was built, that they lost their confidence. For they recognized that this work had been accomplished with the help of God. And isn't that really what it's all about? That we stood shoulder to shoulder, we worked together as one body to accomplish this great work. And God was with us. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we work together, isn't it? But again, I, I've talked for, for much too long. And we all have a, a, a lot of work to do. There's still much rebuilding. So return to your labors knowing that your brothers and sisters and our God is with us. And I'll return to mine. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. <laughs>